ešte dám musím páčiť. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Father of all nations and ages, we recall the day when our country claimed its place among the family of nations. For what has been achieved, we give you thanks. For the work that still remains, we ask your help. And as you have called us from many peoples to be one nation, Grant that under your providence, our country may share your blessings with all the peoples of the earth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. 
Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to fertility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know <laughs> that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that sees for itself is not hope. For who hopes for what one sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait with endurance. In the same way, the Spirit, too, comes to the aid of our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. We know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. When I behold your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you should be mindful of him, or the son of man that you should care for him? O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. You have made him little less than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him rule over the works of your hands. O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. Putting all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yes, and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, and whatever swims the paths of the seas. O Lord, I want to hear your name.
Peace I leave you, says the Lord. My peace I give to you. Alleluia. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. It is uh, so uh, good that we're able to come together. Uh, it's good that we have the freedom to come together to uh, worship Almighty God uh, on this day, which is Independence Day for our nation, the United States of America. A nation that was founded uh, first and foremost out of the desire to have religious freedom. Um, a nation that uh, uh, was uh, brought about by men and women who uh, put their faith in God and who took the risk of laying claim to the God-given freedom and the rights that accord with human life and dignity. And uh, to seize upon the opportunity uh, that God had set before them uh, to make uh, uh, an arrangement that would allow people opportunity for the uh, fundamental goods of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Over the um, more than 200 years, I guess I, we're not we're not too far away from what 250 years already. I don't, I've lost track, but but um, uh, over these many years, uh, we're still a relatively young country in the world scene, but uh, a country that God has graced very abundantly and, and blessed very abundantly, and that has made uh, such a magnificent contribution to the family of nations, to the world, and has been a uh, light uh, in so many ways. Um, uh, uh, in which people have been drawn to come to America because it is a land of opportunity. Um, you don't find people trying to get into so many of these other countries that uh, are uh, engrossed in um, totalitarian regimes and oppression and uh, who are starving their people either by, by uh, the corrupt control of such regimes 
or by um, corrupt leadership in places where um, there, there's brute force exercised upon the people um, and virtually enslaves them, where there is no hope, where people are stuck in a circumstance where they don't have the opportunity uh, and their lives are in danger for trying to aspire for something greater. Um, we are living in a time wherein um, uh, the forces of evil are being unleashed against our country and everything that it stands for, against our constitution and against the way of life uh, that we have um, been provided by God. Uh, I think we have to be realistic about this and understand that um, a, a republic has to have a virtuous people and it has to elect virtuous leaders. It has to be um, uh, the understanding that freedom is not license to do what one wants to no matter what the cause or how it impacts others but rather freedom and responsibility go together. And uh, I think in many ways people have um, focused so much on personal individual rights uh, for freedom uh, that they have forgotten about the responsibility aspect and have taken their eye off the ball. They stopped watching and safeguarding um, and uh, while they were distracted with many other things, entertainments and things that are um, sort of, you might say, living off the fat of the land, um, uh, there have been others at hard at work uh, trying to lay the foundations and under undermine the foundations and erode the foundations that have made our people a unified people with a common purpose and a common vision. And now we see instead of being a land that is living under the order of laws, we are a land that is um, being attacked by mobs and uh, by people who are completely irrational, who are full of anger, and don't know what they're angry about, who seize upon their opportunists, they seize upon whatever occasion they can uh, to, uh, to protest and riot. There's a criminal element that is about um, not interested in the stated cause for their assembly and their protests, but rather an element that wants to use those opportunities uh, so that they can steal and do violence to innocent people, etc. The devil has found his way in and we need to be very, very clear about that. Uh, there are so many who are in positions of responsibility, elected offices, and, and then those in the, in the state, also known as a deep state, who um, uh, have set their sights on uh, unmitigated lust for power and its power at all costs. Its power wrecked the nation uh, to sate their lust for power, uh, put people in economic slavery uh, out of their lust for power. And uh, complete loss of the understanding of um, what the meaning and the purpose of service in government is about. It's about being free, uh, but to live in an orderly way according to the laws and constitution of the nation so that we can have life, so that we can have a life with opportunity and possibilities of good things. We remember that when Moses uh, was given the covenant by God and then he took it to the people, 
uh, to ratify the covenant. He said, I set before you a blessing or a curse. And he, exhorted, and he told them what would happen if they followed God's commandments and um, lived uprightly and responsibly and so forth. They would have abundance of blessings and prosperity and fullness of life and they would thrive. But if they disregarded these things, took them for granted, abused them, uh, then this would bring great misery uh, and death upon them. And he exhorted them, choose life. Choose life. When it comes down to it, friends, the most fatal flaw that has been allowed to stand in the history of this nation. And there have been many flaws in the history of this nation. Certainly, slavery is one of the worst things uh, that one can imagine. But yet we're a nation uh, who went into civil war to overcome this scourge. Uh, whereas in many places in the world, slavery is still going strong um, and it is here too but it's in sex trafficking mostly in, in human trafficking uh, uh, and we have to continue to fight against that but the worst thing is the unmitigated uh, attack against the sanctity of human life um, how can we expect to be a free people? How can we expect to be a people who have opportunity and possibilities available to us if we allow this terrible scourge of abortion to continue in this land? If we allow uh, this to be even protected uh, in this land under the pretext of rights and um, uh, a, a phony um, claim at protecting that under the Constitution. It's contradictory. And as long as we have uh, this cancerous reality at work in our country, we will not truly be a people at peace. And we will never be able to be fully what we are uh, given the opportunity to be until uh, the right to life at every stage, but we know numerically the greatest threat to the right to life is for the unborn. Uh, until this is overcome and there's a real change of heart, uh, we will have to uh, struggle and struggle and struggle, but struggle we must. We cannot give in. We cannot cede this to those who uh, are so, who have such bloodlust. Uh, it is, it's a terrible, it's a terrible and horrible, shameful reality. Have we come to know the love that God has for us in His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ? Or has our nation become uh, uh, so distant from God that uh, we've cast him off and now we are blind because of the sin that we've allowed to blind us the spiritual darkness that we've allowed to take over these are very important things uh, those who are trying to tear down America, they can find nothing good to say. Uh, everything is about pitting people against one another and about uh, uh, claiming that our, 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 our country and its laws and the way things are structured are always unjust. And, you know, it, it's an un, unrelenting kind of an attack. Um, but we have to look at these things in a, in a very responsible and level-headed manner. 
And while we have emotions about them, we cannot allow the emotions to take over, but we should allow it to energize us to really promote the truth and promote right thinking and right action and to promote a rediscovery of responsibility and to come back to what is the social contract of this nation, the fact that uh, people all together are sovereigns of the nation and that we have to work through and, and uh, discern and refine our way of thinking. We have to refine our decisions about policies and laws and so forth. So always to seek to be more aligned with the truth that God has revealed. And so on this Independence Day, while we are facing such great difficulties, we must be grateful to Almighty God for what He has bestowed upon us. And we must fall on our knees and beg His assistance, the aid of His grace, the illumination of minds and hearts, the power of the Holy Spirit to change hearts and minds and bring people to spiritual renewal and renewal in the truth and to strengthen us in courage and conviction, to move into action, to uh, be a people who serve our nation rightly and who bring our religious faith into the public square and are uh, unrelenting in talking about God and His holy will and um, of inspiring people to see the possibilities and of educating people to see the consequences of bad choices and bad decisions and bad ideas uh, and those Trojan horses uh, that propose something that looks appealing, but then once it's let in, uh, can be the undoing of the common good and the well-being of individuals. America has such great promise and is still uh, such a great opportunity, and yet we cannot survive if we allow ourselves to drift away from our Creator and the source and the means of the grace that we so desperately need, not only for our survival, but for the well-being of the world in which we live. And so, uh, coming back to these Beatitudes, coming back to this life that the Lord has called us to, of being uh, a people who, you know, um, who don't just sit back in a defensive mode um, and kind of try to fend off the attacks. That's not good enough. We have to be on the march. We have to be evangelizing, if you will. Yes, truly, bringing the gospel, but also the civic virtues, promoting these civic virtues and uh, engaging and revealing the deceptions and uh, promoting the right understandings so that our young people will be trained to be leaders. You know, I was talking with uh, someone recently this week about uh, certain needs in our parish and so forth and how grateful I've been about how in different circumstances different people have stepped up and helped in wonderful ways. I was, I was saying that, you know, so often we burn our own, we, we have good people, but we keep going back to the same people who are relatively few in number, who say yes and show leadership abilities and who step up and help with things. And, uh, we go to them and they say yes, we go to them again and they say yes and again and again and again. Uh, uh, and, and we can burn them out. Meanwhile, we're doing nothing to develop and train people for leadership. And we have to have a culture, really, that's built into the life of the parish. And I think we have to have a culture that's built into the life of the nation to develop and train leaders. 
Uh, and that means that we have to look at our educational system and all the different kinds of things that are, are going on uh, that have become corrupted and reformed. And we have to look at curricula and education and the resources and the materials. Uh, we have to look at the revisionist histories that are being taught and correct those things. Uh, and uh, so we've got to we've got to purge out the poison, and we've got to infuse things uh, with that which is life giving and good. This is true for the nation. It's also true for us in living our our life of faith, because we cannot disassociate our life of faith from our citizenship. We have to be faithful citizens and give the witness of faith in, in, uh, in our civic activity. It's very, very important that we uh, uh, really call people to step up, to vote, to make sure that they're informed about uh, the issues at hand, the positions of the candidates, the platforms of the parties, and look at the moral principles that are taught by the church. Uh, and apply those principles uh, and, and let that inform you when you go into the voting booth. We, of course, are not in a position where we're permitted to tell you what party or what candidates to vote for. That's important for you to work out and discern. But it becomes pretty clear pretty quickly. Um, so, all of these things are to say that the Lord uh, has given us great blessings. These blessings are at risk. And it's a time for us to step up, to stand up and step up and say no to uh, these forces that are doing wrong. That we be a people who examine our conscience individually and collectively and uh, rectify things that are not right, and that we surge in doing the good. And we ask Almighty God's help uh, for our sake and, the for, and, and for the sake of all. And so we pray that God bless America. We give thanks for the gift of uh, independence, the gift of freedom, and the gift of responsibility. May we uh, uh, face the challenges that we have with faith, with courage. Um, may we be a people who help our young people to have an optimism for the future and uh, uh, an awareness of the possibilities uh, that can be uh, available to them and, and to future generations and to realize that this is a legacy to be preserved and passed on. God bless you. Let us now turn to the Lord with our prayers of petition. Lord, we 
may graciously receive us as a sacrifice acceptable to himself. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your church, for you yourself are the source of all devotion. And grant, we pray, that what we ask in faith, we may truly obtain through Christ our Lord. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, the Lord God, these gifts we bring to this altar, and having taught us through the wisdom of the gospel, Lead us to true justice and lasting peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. He spoke to us a message of peace and taught us to live as brothers and sisters. His message took form in the vision of our founding fathers as they fashioned a nation where we might live as one. His message lives on in our midst as our task for today and a promise for tomorrow. And so with hearts full of love, we join the angels today and every day of our lives to sing your glory 
had as we had claimed. Sanctu Bhus, Sanctu Bhus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenitus Cheli et Terra, Glory had to our Hosanna in excelsis, Bene Ictus, we bene in nomine comiti, Hosanna in excelsis. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, his assistant Bishop George, and all those who hold him to the truth and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, so they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living in truth, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. From the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way. When supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mm -hmm. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who do this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us, Mark, gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. To us also, your servants, who know sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. omnipotenti, <laughs> In unitati spiritus sancti, omnis ono et gloria, ter omnia secula seculorum. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. A new stay, we told us that
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The Lord have not brought you that you should enter into my room, but only say the word in my soul.
Let us pray. <clears throat> By showing us in this Eucharist, <clears throat> O Lord, a glimpse of the unity and joy of your people in heaven, deepen our unity and intensify our joy that all who believe in you may work together to build the city of lasting peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, I didn't, <coughs> I didn't mention, but I think it is, <coughs> it is important that we it is important that we remember and we include in our prayers those many people who throughout the history of our nation have given up their lives in defense of uh, uh, our rights and our freedoms. Uh, those who swore to defend and protect the Constitution and who have um, done so for godly purposes. Uh, these things are not to be treated as negligible, but rather as a, as a great responsibility that we have to honor and to preserve. And so um, let us re uh, remember them in our prayers with gratitude and with renewed resolve uh, to uh, promote, defend, and love our nation. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. We are defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God relieve him, we humbly pray. And do thou, a Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast in hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. O glorious Prince, Saint Michael, Chief and Commander of the Heavenly Hosts, Guardian of Souls, and vanquisher of rebel, rebel spirits, servant in the house of the divine king and our admirable conductor, you who shine with excellence and superhuman virtue, deliver us from all evil who turn to you with confidence. Enable us by your gracious protection to serve God more and more faithfully every day. Amen. Father, I abandon myself in your hands. Do with me what you will. Whatever you may do, I thank you. I am ready for all. I accept all. Let only your will be done in me and all your people. I wish no more than this, O oh Lord. In your hands I commend my soul. I offer to you with all the love of my heart. For I love you, Lord, and so need to give myself, to surrender myself into your hands without reserve and with boundless confidence. For you are my Father. Deal not with us, Lord, according to our sins, and take not vengeance on us of our misdeeds. Help us, O God, our deliverer, and for thy name's sake, O Lord, free us. Remember not, O Lord, the sins of old. Hasten to us with thy compassion, for we are become exceeding poor. Saint Sebastian, pray for us, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come unto thee. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, God, save to hear us, O God, our only salvation, and through the intercession of the glorious and blessed Mary, Mother of God and ever Virgin, of thy blessed martyr, Sebastian, and of all the saints, deliver thy people from the terrors of thy wrath, and restore their confidence by the outpouring of thy compassion. Be moved to pity, O Lord, in our earnest entreaties, and heal the illnesses of body and soul so that experiencing thy forgiveness, we may ever rejoice in thy blessing. We beseech thee, O Lord, grant us a hearing as we devoutly raise our petitions to thee, and graciously turn away the epidemic of plague which afflicts us, so that mortal hearts may recognize that these scourges proceed from thy indignation, and cease only when thou art moved to mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, thy Son, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and evermore. Amen. Oh, 